ड्यूरिंग द थर्ड क्वार्टर ऑफ द सेंचुरी द वर्ल्ड हैज सीन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड प्रोग्रेस कंप्राइजिंग इन दीज अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स एंड ऑर्डर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ विच इज अनपैरल इन ह्यूमन हिस्ट्री एंड एट अराउंड द क्लोज ऑफ दिस क्वार्टर सेंचुरी मोर स्पेसिकली ओवर द लास्ट एट मंथ आर सो द वर्ल्ड हैज आल्सो बीन इंगल्फ्ड फॉर न्यूमरस प्रॉब्लम्स देयर इज इवन डेंजर दैट द प्रजेंट इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक सिस्टम विच हैज बीन द सीट एंकर ऑफ द ऑर्डरली डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द पोस्ट सेकेंड वार वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी मी मे कोलैप्स वी मे रिवर्ट टू अ चाउटिक सिचुएसन इन द मैटर ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड एंड एक्सचेंजेस अनलेस करेक्टिव स्टेप्स आर टेकन टू इंश्योर द प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक सिस्टम इट इज़ देयर फोर मोस्ट टाइमली दैट इंटरनेशनल फाइनेंशियल एक्सपर्ट्स फ्राम बोथ डेवलप्ड एंड अंडर डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज फ्राम कंट्रीज विद अ परसिस्टेंट बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट सरप्लस एज वेल एज विद क्रोनिक बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट प्रॉब्लम्स फ्राम कंट्रीज ऑन द थ्रेस होल्ड ऑफ डेवलपमेंट एंड फ्राम दीज स्टर्लिंग to break out of the vicious circle of poverty low savings and low investment and consequent low income have gathered here today to discuss the problem of the world economy in this crucial period of human history the major problem of the world for the next 25 years as i see it is that of bringing about a better balance in the living standards and rates of growth of different peoples in habiting this planet as i stated earlier the world has seen unprecedented growth over the last 25 years an order of growth which perhaps the world has not seen in a couple of centuries proceeding this quarter century or even perhaps over a thousand years proceeding the last couple of centuries nonetheless this growth has occurred only in certain parts of the world and has felt behind vast sections of the human race living in conditions prevailing in the middle ages or even worse this inevitably gives rise to tensions and to problems of international exchanges which are deep seated and for which all thinking men have to find an adequate solution in the race for growth we cannot afford to forget or to neglect the conditions of life and the prospects of growth for large sections of the world population large disparities lead to tensions and create manifold problems and discrepancies with a country with improved communications the same is likely to hold true for the committee of nations the basic problem that faces the world today in my view is one of orderly growth of all nations the 1960s were declared by the united nations as the first development decade and a fair amount of growth was achieved by many developing countries during those 10 years though in retrospect one finds that the rate of growth achieved by the developing countries has still been less than the rate of growth achieved by the developed countries generally the second development decade however has not seen even this modest rate of growth in so far as the developing countries are concerned indeed the year which has just ended has been unprecedented inflation in all countries of the world with an attempt by many countries including some developed ones 
to pass on the burdens of this inflation to others with the result that this burden has fallen on those who are least capable of bearing it there has also been a cooling off of the spirit of cooperation and international assistance which has characterized the previous decade i consider this to be an unhappy development just as no man can live and thrive by himself no country can prosper today in isolation or in complete disregard of the well-being of its neighbors and of its trading partners around the world this is a perspective which i feel we should keep in mind while discussing some of the present problems of the world I have heard in many forums that the crisis in the world today arises solely because of the policies adopted by the oil producing countries. The sudden and sharp increase in oil prices has undoubtedly created certain problems for which there is need for appropriate solutions for the problems of transition and adjustment. but the seem to forget that oil is a vasting resource that for decade the price of oil has no relationship to the real cost of this primary source of energy in terms of the cost of its alternatives and that the trade and aid policies of the developed countries have also been onerous for many developing countries the more so because of the long history of such policies in more recent times i find that the forces of inflation are becoming in infections and that many countries facing internal problems are seeking to pass on the burden of their own inflation to other helpless countries this is my mind is a short sighted policy which contribute to the sense of international insecurity and which could lead to a return to the distressing conditions of the interwar years we should not encourage this bad policy